Now the truth is cancel culture can ruin you as a man in the workplace. Now here we've got an example of someone who has been hauled into Google HR twice due to just little jokes he was making. And this is why it's very important if you're watching this video and you're kind of red-pilled on how the world works, you're kind of based, you understand how things are. You should be very careful when it comes to female employees, particularly as a man who's worked in corporate. If you're new to the channel, I have worked for over 10 years at top investment banks, banks like Goldman and Morgan Stanley. And this individual has worked at Google and Boston Consulting Group, and he's gonna tell you how toxic these environments can be for men. He is going to go through two incidents and I'll give you some additional context as we go in. And I, I definitely recommend you understand this because some of you might be naive, but it's very important to understand that men are effectively in danger in the workplace environment of false allegations. Sometimes you're in the workplace environment, it's more about surviving than thriving because you're just trying to deal with all these false allegations. You've seen recent things, depending on your political views, you might not agree with some of these, but... Things like Johnny Depp, Andrew Tay, or Donald Trump, people like that have been subject to false allegations. So let's listen to a bit more about his experience because you never know, you could be the next contestant on that Summer Jam screen. To check in with them and, and, and align. And there was this girl that uh, asked me for lunch. And uh, you know, we had become friends and just kind of chatted. She was in HR and a uh, uh, young girl in her 20s, not abnormal for me. And um, I was a bit younger then. And she's like, hey, yeah, let's go for lunch or dinner or something. I was like, okay, yeah, great. Or, you know, we can do coffee. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, I, I, I don't push anybody to do anything. That's, that's for, for sure. And um, so, but, you know, I was like, oh, okay, well, you, you say you want to do coffee. Let's do coffee or let's do lunch. When do you want to get together? And so I asked her twice or three times uh, in the next couple of days and then uh, or in the next week or two. I said, hey, when do you want to go get, get coffee or lunch? Uh, I think three times, because after that I was like, I'm not going to ask her anymore, let, let her figure it out. Turns out that she said something to somebody else in HR, another woman, that got up to uh, some, one of the managers or directors in, uh, in HR, and, um, and, and out, out of the blue we're having a meeting on something, and, uh, and he says, hey, uh, you know, after people leave, he says, hey, I want to talk to you for a second. Oh, okay. Uh, he says, uh, hey, what's going on with you know, this girl? I don't know. We've been. You know, what do you mean? I, I, I was, I was to totally blindsided. I had no idea, um, because I, I, I don't push anybody to do anything. He says, "Well, have you been uh, harassing her?" I'm like, "No, not at all. Like we're, we're, we're friends. What are you talking about?" He's like, "Well, I'm hearing that uh, that you're making these uh, advances on her." I was like. You gotta be fucking kidding me! And you're like we're 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 scheduling lunch or coffee, and uh, and and I was like, what? I, I was really I was really shocked. Um, and, and he's like, well, stop it! I was like, she she could have said that herself if she didn't want to, but the whole time she's like, hey, let's do coffee or let's do lunch, and then apparently spoke to somebody else in in HR, didn't complain. To anybody but of course they're all in the department so they they bring it to him and then he has to act okay well good lesson being in uh, in corporate america it was weird because there was nothing in propriety uh going on there absolutely nothing um so that was the first time not a very exciting story before you move on to the second story, I want to tell you some interesting points here. Firstly, if you're going to have lunch with a woman, and this is how you've got to handle things now in the workplace due to M2, Me, me uh, Too, and all those type of allegations and things like that. If you're going to have lunch with a woman, you should aim to make sure it's in the workplace. If you're going to have coffee with a woman, it's at the workplace. You know, you don't have to be conscious of security cameras, but at least they're around. So, you know, you're not doing anything inappropriate going for lunch or dinner with a woman after work. Um, you have to understand what type of accusations you might be dealing with if you do. The thing is, a woman can always um, feign innocence later and say she was taken advantage of later. You know, a woman can always, re you know, have regret grape, which is like, you know, after the fact, say they regret something that did happen and, and you were taken advantage of them. As a man, you're always kind of on the back foot in these scenarios. Also, always try to make sure you keep things in the office. And the, the definition of harassment or taking advantage of someone, advances, all these things are very vaguely defined, right? And this can always be leveraged against you. And that's why you should see these 
incidents and these occasions has looked like is someone trying to set you up should you be like i say keep everything in the office keep it all professional don't discuss your personal life this could really backfire on you anytime a woman is spiteful against you now it's important not to complain because um when you do have any form of um like complaining about the way women have a double standard in their favor this can also be leveraged against you so it's like almost anything because this workplace is dominated by you know feminists the weak soy boy liberals is dominated by simps. That kind of culture is very deeply embedded in workplace environment. As a man, you're always on the back foot because you're always dealing with these boomers and different demographics that just don't understand how difficult it is for you to really survive in an environment where everyone else is getting the benefits and not you. Now, this has been my experience to working in um, investment banks. I won't mention which specific one in this story I'm about to tell you. But um, I had a female co-worker who was in the process of being engaged and getting married. And she would always inquire about my life, my personal life. I didn't want to discuss it with her. It was none of her business. And she was getting married. I didn't really want to get into her personal life. But um, people would always make jokes in the office about their personal lives. I just wouldn't bring it up. Um, I didn't want to get involved. I knew you could be subject to cancel culture and things like that. But she kept asking me about my personal life. Oh, who am I? I dating? Am I in a relationship? Things like that. And I would just say, no, I'm just not focused on that right now. I would just give kind of vague answers, but she kept pushing. And this went on for like two or three years where we were on the same team. She would just keep bringing it up and it was like annoying. It's like she's married. I'm not asking about her personal life or whatever. And then other co-workers would be maybe a little more senior on the team would make jokes about her. Even though she's married, she might be into uh, another male co-worker, things like that. And she always went along with the joke and kind of didn't have any issue with it and then one time I made a joke about her husband being short shout out to all the short kings out there but this guy's like midget height kind of guy and she's kind of short too I made a joke about her husband's height and then she really got upset and uh, when I mean upset but the next day she dragged me into an office and she said I want an apology about that joke you made and I'm thinking people have made so many jokes about you cheating on your husband they made jokes about you having a fetish for a, a Scandinavian guy all these type of weird things I would never say in the office right I just made a joke about a husband being short after she made multiple you know unnecessary comments about my personal life about who I should, shouldn't be dating or whatever which I would never even mention in the workplace right and this is the type of back foot you're on a woman can say and get away with whatever they want they'll have double standards certain men can make jokes about them if they're senior but if you're at the same level as them they might feel threatened by that all these type of instances right it's all about whatever they determine is, is appropriate and inappropriate is completely on their behalf. And if you set a line between what you find inappropriate and inappropriate for yourself, you're not really gonna be respected for that. But a woman can make up whatever standards they want, right? And that's interesting, how do you respond? Let me know in the comments section, how would you respond if a woman at work um, who was maybe married, she wasn't asking for herself, but she kept asking you, what's going on in your personal life? Are you dating? What dating apps are you on, blah, you know, and and this is what I mean. This is completely ridiculous. And we're going to listen to the second incident that he dealt with when it comes to his um, HR employee relations really trying to basically end his career. And uh, two ladies get on. One is a blonde hair Australian woman, kind of a land walrus, uh, named Karen or Judy or something like that, right? They think Australian, middle-aged, pretty pissed off woman, kind of short hair, blonde, bleached, right? kind of typical Sydney type of thing, uh, and a bit pissed off at life. The other one was, was a uh, older, uh, middle-aged Japanese woman. Both were in HR. And I think the, the, the Australian woman was, was HR for APAC, Asia Pacific, and the Japanese one was in Japan. And uh, this was like in August or something, uh, 2016, uh, eight years ago. And uh, they, they come in, they're very stern. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? What's up? It's, uh, you know, I, at that point, I had, I had great relationships with everybody and, uh, that I knew of it at Google. And uh, Karen, I'll call her Karen, because, oh my God, she was a Karen, or a Judy Karen. Um, Sherry died. So just to pause quickly there, right? So he starts this meeting with HR employee relations. They're about to go in through all these little jokes he might have made that they felt was inappropriate that someone had reported back to HR. 
Firstly, you should notice, you know, the standard chubby Karen, HR Karen, that exists across all companies. There's a reason why those stereotypes and memes do exist. And notice how, again, who's setting the tone in workplace culture? It's not men. It's typically the AWFL, affluent white female liberal. Typically all women in HR setting the tone, ganging up to police control and effectively castrate men in the workplace environment, demonize them, demean them and control how they socialize, right? And uh, avoid men from engaging in their natural socialization patterns, right? And there's no due process. You can't really defend yourself. You're always on the back foot having to apologize. However, a woman interpreted something as being um, offensive to them. And they always can play the victim, as I say. And as a man, you can't play the victim you always gotta be careful in any interaction with a woman so we're just gonna skip ahead to a bit more detail about the story here do you remember making fun of people's accents i'm like holy shit you gotta be kidding me that's what this is about you you gotta be kidding me that's what it was about okay i'll tell you exactly what happened making fun of people's accents no, I wasn't, but I'll tell you why this came. And uh, it's just the, the telephone that's played in the HR team. It's awesome. So uh, at that time, I was uh, doing stand-up comedy in, uh, in China and, and Thailand and a couple other places, just, just for fun, just amateur stuff. And, um, and I like it. You like getting in front of a crowd. I always like uh, entertaining. And, and during, during any dinner, anytime I get with a lot of people, I like to make everybody laugh. And uh, it's fun. I've always done it. I'm, I'm always... So just to pull off there, right, he's mentioning going for drinks with co-workers. And like I say, in some of my recent videos, right, nothing good can really come from it. It can always backfire on you a couple of years down the line. A woman can make an accusation. Something happened at that work drinks. You see with Brett Kavanaugh and different celebrities, you know, years can pass by and then you get accused of something. The thing is, it's always, you know, you're always at a risk of saying too much. And when you say too much, your manager asks your personal views, maybe at work drinks. A woman misinterpreted your friendliness as making advances on them. Even if you're making a joke about someone's accents and they're on good terms with you, a woman can intervene. A woman from HR can intervene and say that you're taking advantage and mocking people of different cultures. And as a man's natural nature is to joke around, have banter, make fun of people and, and kind of have that type of humor you can't even do that because hr can pull you up and just say oh you've made a joke about people's accents and that's a big issue even if the person who was laughing at the joke didn't find it an issue maybe someone else at the party overheard it and then reported it back to hr that's why avoiding work drinks is just highly advised back and i say okay all right rahul two adams are walking down the street and one stops and he turns to the other and he says holy shit i think i lost an electron and the other guy says, are you sure? And he says, yeah, I'm positive. And Rahul looks at me and he says, and you think people will laugh at that? That's the story. And I was like, no, Rahul, they not. But now they will, because that's funny. So I tell this story at, at the table. And clearly it's the stupidest joke I could think of, but it was a funny story with Rahul. And, uh, and you know, people were laughing and, and you know, we were all, it was all part of the whole shtick at the, at the dinner. Well. As best that I could piece things together, there was an engineering director sitting next to me who had to be, happened to be Indian, from India. This is, you know, like you, not, not like American Indian, but, uh, but yeah, actually, actually, he was based in Mountain View, so he, he was, you know, more American than somebody out of Mumbai or so on. And I didn't even think about it, right? It's just Rahul, that's uh, his accent, but that's what got me in front of HR. Do you think people would laugh at that? That is not making fun of somebody's accent. Now, I do a terrible Indian accent. I, 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 I'm terrible. I, it, it switches from like Indian to Italian to Russian to back to India. I mean, it's a Bangladesh. I, I, I do it terribly. Um, but the point is, you, you're not going to know it's Rahul unless I do the accent. I mean, that's how, the, 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 that's how the guy talks. It's not good or bad. If, if I'm speaking Chinese, which at that point I spoke a lot of Mandarin, I'd have an American accent. Oh, you make fun of that, right? And, and if uh, somebody's an Australian, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, mate, you think you, people will laugh at that, right? Terrible accent. That's because the guy's a fucking Australian. Or if he's a Long Island, I'd be like, oh, you think that's funny, huh? Well, that was what they were going for. And that started the whole investigation. Something investigation into me for 
Do you think people would laugh at that? Crazy. So before we continue his story here, right? It's quite interesting understanding, as I say, you can't really make jokes. You can't even have fun as a man, right? Because there's always someone who's gonna be there at the work drinks, in the office, who's gonna get offended, maybe make a note of it and report it to HR. And there are always gonna be some cultural jokes. You know, people can't make jokes about politics, race or religion. You know, you might, you're gonna have some sense of jokes that need to be made. And then it might be a joke about culture, then that might be too close to making a joke about someone's race or religion, then it becomes offensive. So it's so difficult to communicate. And you know, when people say diversity isn't our strength, diversity doesn't work. This is what it means in the sense that sometimes, you know, there's, you're gonna have people from different cultures. You have to accept a certain level of banter and jokes that you might find a little bit offensive, but it's just jokes, right? Now, this could lead to other small issues for yourself, you know. Um, what they end up happening after this is HR overreact, they keep investigating him, they do a three month investigation, and this is when you've really gotta be careful. And this is what I mean, one small incident, one small joke at uh, work drinks, all of a sudden they're checking all your emails, they're asking and interviewing all your other team members, did you say anything offensive? And maybe one team member doesn't like you, and then they go, oh, there was that one time you made that other joke about race or about woman, and then they're gonna build a case to fire you, basically, and you'll be dismissed. And it won't be like a layoff, where they pay you a certain amount of money and ask you to leave. They'll just say you violated company policy and dignity or work policy, and they wanna fire you. This is how it works, right? So. One small issue can lead to a three month, six month investigation, one other incident being found and then you're being fired or you're definitely not gonna be put up for promotions because you're gonna seen as a, be seen as a high risk employee who has too much, um, too many incidents against them, right? So it can really disadvantage your career. And what did you do? Go to work, uh, go to work, after work, had a drink, made a joke. All of a sudden, it's the difference between you getting paid your current salary and getting promoted and getting a 30% pay rise. That's how ridiculous a workplace culture has become with cancel culture, right? We all have accents. We all can accept a certain level of jokes. And if we can make fun of white people or Americans or different accents across uh, the, the Western Europe and things, we should you know, be able to make jokes about different cultures too, right? My experience was at one major investment bank I won't mention, we would have regular team meetings and we had quite a large team of 20 people and the senior manager, he was white, but he would always make fun of Indian accents, even though there was no one Indian on our team apart from myself and he wasn't making a joke about me. He would just make a joke about, because he found Indian accents funny, right? But what's interesting is how many double standards there are. It's not clear, like it's acceptable if a white guy makes fun of an Indian accent, even though it's kind of not relevant to anything we're doing. It's not like we're in India or we're working with Indian colleagues. He would just always make fun of Indian accents. Every time we had a team meeting, it was a bit weird. But it's interesting, the double standard there. Now, if the white guy made a joke about woman, um, it could be leveraged against him, or black people, or the rainbow flag community, or certain religions, or migrants. It's very interesting what the nuances are. Sometimes you can make a joke, sometimes you can't. And that's what cancel culture is doing to the workplace environment. Interesting case for that manager, he'd always make jokes about Indian accents, but one or two times he made jokes about a white woman on the team. And like I said, the most protected class in the West, in the workplace environment is the AWFL, affluent white female liberal. If you're a white woman at work, whether you realize it or not, you're getting the most extra special treatment. She made one or two jokes about her. She went to HR. He basically had to deal with a massive issue. He had to apologize, do all these things. Even though she was so junior, he was so senior, he had to basically get on one knee and ask for forgiveness from her. Then she ended up getting promoted, even though she had a reputation for being the worst employee on the team. She ended up getting promoted, but he still didn't like her and resented her for that. So he ended up giving her lots of pointless work just to keep her busy until she took the message to leave the company. And that's how it really works in terms of some of these kind of weird cancel culture dynamics and how it's biased. And sometimes, sometimes it's acceptable, sometimes it's not acceptable. And like I say, I'm not having a go at any demographic, but if we can say we can make jokes about Indian accents, we can't make jokes about one other demographic, then why does that exist? It's kind of double standards. That's why I say, be careful about after work drinks, be careful about making jokes at work. You never know how badly it could backfire. What? You know, she's like, do you remember? It was that serious. Do you remember making fun of people's accents? So I told her the story. I said, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I, I was like, oh my God, that was, was a joke. And let me tell you the joke. And, and the punchline is not about the guy's accent. The punchline is that, is that it was a stupid joke about atoms and an electron, which is negative, it becomes positive. And, um, 
And he, uh, you know, and he thought it wasn't funny. That's the joke. But, uh, but they started this investigation into me, into yours truly, Uncle Rich, Uncle Dicky, and, uh, and so they talked to everybody at the table, everybody that was there. Then she's, you know, I tell her the story, and they kind of chuckle. They're, they're both trying, really holding back the laugh, especially the Japanese lady, because it's funny, funny story. And uh, uh, but Karen wasn't having any of it, and then she, she switched topics. I was like, yeah, that's it. She's like, do you remember what you were doing on May 18th? And I'm like, Jesus, lady, what are you talking about? I was like, I got to check my, uh, my schedule. So we'll, we'll dive back into his story in a moment. But HR will start really digging. HR, you're dealing with completely deranged people. And as he says, the joke really wasn't about the accent necessarily. It was just about, you know, him not being funny. And what ends up happening is you will, to survive in the workplace environment a lot of the times, you have to avoid socializing because it's so constrained right now what you can and can't, can't say. Even if you avoid the typical topics, you should avoid politics, relationships and religion. And another key point there, what's getting him into trouble is going to work drinks and drinking a lot of alcohol. Um, and I'm not saying, you know, he's alcoholic or anything like that, but you'll end up saying things that could really get you in trouble, which is a normal part of male culture, saying something politically incorrect but it could really get you in trouble when you're being judged by these ridiculous woke culture, cancel culture standards. For example, he mentions uh, at different times, I've kind of skipped some of the, the, the but he mentioned going to working in Japan and in Japan, they'd ha go to massage parlors, uh, you know, strip joints, things like that and drink and, and have fun there because that's normal part of male culture there. But in the West, it's like demonized. It's kind of seedy. It's like you can't talk about it. But this is what happens, man. You make one joke and then they investigate everything. And my advice to you is if you make a friend at work and typically co-workers are not your friends, anything you, you talk about with them or you spend time with them, if you really build a genuine friendship, do things completely outside the workplace context. So don't go for after work drinks. I would say maybe we'll meet up on a Friday evening or a Saturday evening and go somewhere. If you're gonna do something like, you know, going someplace which would be considered politically incorrect or saying something like that. Generally, of course, coworkers are not your friends, but instances like that, you don't want the whole, uh, you know, workplace culture seeping into how you socialize with others and avoid drinking around coworkers generally, right? And uh, now we're gonna to listen to this really, convoluted story about HR trying to set him up like he was trying to take advantage of co-workers and invite them to his hotel room and just for some context here you know he's working like as a management consultant and things like that where you didn't be involved in a lot of travel having lots of hotel visits living in a hotel and working at local offices so you're going to spend some time socializing with your co-workers at the hotel bar and things like that but they tried to spin the story like he's trying to drag uh, employees back to his uh, personal you know, hotel room. So it really is such a risky situation. I really hope you can learn from this. She's like, you asked her to your room. I'm like, no, I didn't. There's no way. She's like, well, so what did you ask? I said, I asked her to the lobby and, and I have, I have drinks with lots of colleagues in that lobby. It's gorgeous. You should go there sometime when you're in Tokyo. It's gorgeous there. It is it's such a privilege to, to you know, be a frequent visitor there and, and, and staff knows me. It's wonderful experience. And I've had many, many in that lobby. None of them go up to my room. Yeah, none of them. <laughs> she says, well, <clears throat> it was an unwelcome invitation. You're not allowed to do that. I said, how do you know if something's unwelcome the first time you ask? Isn't that the whole point of asking for consent? Hey, would you like to do this? What the hell does unwelcome invitation means? You don't know if it's unwelcome until you ask and you say, hey, would you like to do this? And they say, oh, no, I wouldn't. Don't ask me again. Okay, I won't ask you again. Fine. But it's, this went to HR of like, like, oh my God, you cannot even, you know, ask somebody something that they will find unwelcome and that unwelcome you don't know until you ask. It makes no sense, no sense. So I was like, you know, I'm sitting there looking at Judy, judging her intelligence, not high. And I'm thinking, you know, like, I'm not gonna win an argument with this woman ever. There's no argument to be made. There's just, you know, even, even if I'm completely right in this, there's, there's, there's nothing, uh, there's absolutely nothing that I can do.
And that's a good lesson because once HR gets their claws into you, they investigate the shit out of you. They they into a whole bunch of things. And this this girl, this you know unwanted invitation was you know a month or two before the other incident. But they had interviewed everybody and and to find something that uh, things that they could build a case at. You have no representation. <clears throat> they don't have to tell you what you're being accused of. You have. There's no rules. There's no like bill of rights or anything like that. It's just they can do whatever they want. R works for the company. So of course HR works for the company. Um, HR could take everything out of context. You know, something you say one time, they can put it in writing and make it look another way. If you have drinks in the lobby, what they assume that you're taking advantage of women, they're always going to assume the worst of you as a male employee. They taking advantage of women. Typically, these women in HR are very feminist. This is the reality why many men are kind of scared of work or they really don't like to be socialized in work environments. And as, as you can see, they're probably investigating him for several months. They were interviewing him on multiple occasions. And the HR agenda isn't to, you know, hire and recruit employees and create good workplace culture. It's really to control employees and um, put you in a position again where you're in the back foot. He has to pretend to apologize and, and debate and have a logical discussion with a woman who's built on emotion because now he has to plan ahead. He has to assume any interaction with women could be put him in the back foot and disadvantage his career. And this is why society as a whole should get used to men dropping out the workplace the same way men are dropping out of society. Now, if you want some career advice, you're a man dealing with these difficult scenarios, feel free to reach out to me, link in description, we can speak directly and I can help guide you through these difficult feminist workplace environments full of cancel culture and things like that. Now, if you've had similar experiences, let me know in the comments. Again, we're all anonymous, many people, uh, you know, if you're leaving a comment, so you can be honest with us and let other men know and warn other men of your similar experiences of how bad it can get in the corporate environment with cancel culture. And there are also two videos on your screen right now. So hopefully you check them out and I'll see you next time.